manufacturers. Well, deciding whether you're going to fly sick, especially with the holidays looming, poses a real issue for travelers. Because in Canada, a woman claims she was forced to fly while sick with the H1N1. She said she wanted to change her flight. She would have, but she would have been forced to pay nearly $700 in change fees to do so. Meanwhile, in Tampa, Florida, a woman and her daughter were taken off a United Airlines flight to Hawaii because the crew suspected the mom might have been ill with H1N1 or swine flu. I'm joined now by Dr. Stephanie Herodopoulos of Omni Healthcare in Orlando, Florida, and she says airlines need to create more lenient cancellation policies for H1N1. I'm also joined by Catherine Andrus, Assistant General Counsel for the Air Transport Association of America. Thanks to you guys for joining me today. And Stephanie, I want to start with you. What do you want the airlines okay, to do? I would like to see them waive the cancellation fees. I am on the front line of the war of this flu pandemic that currently exists that we haven't had since 1976. I'm diagnosing it every day. I see how contagious it can be. And I'm working hard on prevention and vaccination of, of the flu pandemic. And I think that if we uh, citizens are being responsible by trying to cancel their flights, but they're being stuck with these fees, they're going to be less less likely to, to not fly, therefore choosing their pocketbooks over their health. And Catherine, we have been pounding it into people. Don't go to work sick, mm -hmm. keep your kids home if they're sick, don't get on airplanes if they're sick. And yet by, I've been trying to really say to people, airplanes are still a safe place to be. But if the airlines don't help out economically, this is a real concern that people are going to get on planes ill. Well, it's a concern uh, anytime people have to change their plans because of illness. Uh, there are often financial considerations, whether or not you go to work when you're sick, uh, if you don't have paid sick leave, whether you get your child home from school, if you don't have alternative child care arrangements, or whether you take a trip that you've uh, planned and paid for. Um, a lot depends on what kinds of arrangements you have. How do you uh, purchase travel insurance, for example? But, you know, but Catherine, the average person is not going to travel, purchase travel insurance, you know, going from coast to coast. And I want to put up some of the airlines and what they are say that mm -hmm. they're doing. Uh, United will waive some fees with a doctor's note. American says, you know, the, the $150 fee may still apply. But if you look at this list, there is really no consistency among the carriers. Why can't everybody get on the same page and say, look, until springtime, we are going to be fluid and we are going to try to keep everybody, frankly, safe and keep this country moving? Well, I think airlines have been flexible and have adopted flexible policies. They are carrier by carrier. They're different for different carriers. And that's uh, in large part because of the system we have in this country where there is not uh, government regulation of the fares and the policies that airlines impose. But, you know, I would say the same thing. There's enough government air, air regulation and a lot of things. And, you know, I, Wall Street comes to mind, but you expect corporations to sort of step up to the plate and do the right thing. Stephanie, is that, is that um, argument good enough for you? Absolutely. I think that by the airlines taking a leadership role in, in saying, look, we understand that this is a huge public safety issue. We want to help out our consumers and our flight attendants who are exposed for that matter and say, look, let, let's take this unique flu season we haven't had in years and, make, and, and take a fresh look at our policies. And, and I think that this could be a win-win for them. They can show that they're being caring during these tough times and gain loyalty in the future customers. Let's face it, there's competition out there. People are watching what, what they do now. Wow, you're sounding like a real customer. A, a, a customer-based idea. Smart. Dr. Stephanie Herodopoulos, thank you so much. Thank you. And Catherine Andrus, thanks too. Thank you. You too. All right, well,